Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news for around the world in five. Doctors of a US man with terminal heart disease who was implanted with a genetically modified pig's heart in a first-of-its-kind surgery say he is doing well. <laughs> The surgery, performed by a team at the University of Maryland Medicine, is among the first to demonstrate the feasibility of a pig-to-human heart transplant, a field made possible by new gene editing tools. If proven successful, scientists hope pig organs could help alleviate shortages of donor organs. We were quite pleased that uh, as we separated from the heart-lung machine, the animal heart was uh, functioning by my eye at least, just about as normal as we could have expected. Australian border officials are investigating whether Novak Djokovic's travel entry form included a false declaration. Djokovic's visa was revoked on arrival in Melbourne last week and he was sent to an immigration detention hotel. But to celebrations outside from fans, his legal team won a court case that overturned the visa ban. The player, who is hoping to defend his Australian Open title next week, has since been pictured training, but there are now questions as to whether he had not travelled in the 14 days before his arrival, as was stated in his travel entry form. Good, uh, good luck in Australia. Thank you very much. You're very kind. Social media posts appear to show him in both Serbia and Spain during that fortnight. The suspect in a fire that gutted parts of South Africa's 138-year-old parliament building this month has been charged with terrorism. <coughs> Zandile Mafé had already been charged with arson in connection with the fire, but the additional charge of terrorism was added because he had also been caught with an explosive device. Officials have described it as an attack on the country's democracy. The blaze caused the roof of the newer part of the building to collapse and also damaged the old wing dating back to 1884. US President Joe Biden and Ethiopian Prime Minister Abe Ahmed have held a candid telephone call days after an airstrike reportedly killed 56 people at a camp for displaced people in Tigray. Joe Biden has expressed concern over airstrikes in Ethiopia's north and over human rights issues, the White House said. That call came just two days after aid workers said an airstrike had killed 56 people at a camp for displaced people in the Tigray region. Footage from Tigray TV showed bodies being sprinkled with water while mourners watched, as well as damaged buildings and tents in what was purportedly the camp. Thousands have died and millions been forced from their homes since war broke out in November 2020. North Korea has fired a suspected ballistic missile less than a week after it launched what it claimed was a hypersonic missile. South Korea said it detected the launch at 7.27 local time on Tuesday. Japan's Coast Guard also reported the launch, saying North Korea had fired a ballistic missile-like object. It comes shortly after six countries issued a statement urging the North to cease its destabilizing actions. The European Parliament President David Sassoli has died at the age of 65. 145 votes. The Italian former journalist and centre-left politician had been seriously ill for more than two weeks and cancelled all official activities. He was admitted to hospital in Italy last month due to a serious complication with his immune system. David Sassoli. Paying tribute, EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen called him a passionate European and a good man. He died in the early hours of Tuesday in a hospital in Aviano. Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega has been sworn into office for his fourth consecutive term, hours after the United States and the European Union imposed sanctions on several figures of his government. Ortega won the November the 7th poll after most of his political foes were jailed, prompting widespread condemnation. U.S. President Joe Biden called the election a pantomime, accusing the former Marxist guerrilla and Cold War adversary of the United States of growing authoritarianism. And finally, China is gearing up for the Winter Olympics with Harbin, known as Ice City, shown off for the cameras for the very first time. The capital of northeast China's Heilongjiang province includes Olympic-themed light shows, installation arts, as well as a range of ice and snow sculptures located in the Harbin ice snow world. One of the main attractions took more than 50 artists eight days to construct. It measures 100 metres long and 30 metres high. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.